good, good afternoon. Um, uh, I think we, it, it's time for, for me to get started. Uh, my talk, uh, actually I'm going to, and me and my colleague were go, are going to give two talks on the automotive security. One is on the CAN bus, CAN bus uh, anomaly detection, and another one is on the uh, immobilizer security, which will include in a demo. Uh, on <coughs> And then we will open, we will try to hack the immobilizer on the on site. So let me uh, introduce, uh, let me introduce my, my team first. Uh, my team is uh, from the ch uh, largest security company of China called Qihu 360. We have like over uh, 7,000 employees. So it's a huge company. And we are also, uh, our team specialized in the wireless security, including the GPS, uh, V2X security, and anything that you use video we are all interested in. So we have made some mm, wireless uh, hacking gadgets you can use. If you are interested, in, you could drop by at our vendor, vendor area to see that uh, what we have brought here. So <coughs> let's get started. Uh, the, the outline of my talk would be like a quick rec recap of the status quo of connect connected vehicle security research. I will like uh, 20 pages of PowerPoint to explain the current status quo. <coughs> and then I will talk a little about talk a little bit about uh, automobile working principle because I had uh, like uh, my automotive background so I want to, to share with you how a um, typical automobile work and uh, finally I will get to the course uh, the meat of this talk canvas anomaly detection which I I, I will explain later okay so this is a timeline of the car hacking uh, development, car security development. Uh, uh, it all started from like performance tuning. The, the hackers or the uh, car uh, try to modify the firmware to in order to like uh, uh, increase the performance of their cars. Maybe, uh, for example, if the, the car manufacturers have like a speed limit uh, programmed in, inside the controller of the uh, automobile, they might uh, change that. And then, uh, uh, immobilizer hacking, uh, which is uh, uh, with the purpose uh, like they want to steal the car. And then uh, the, uh, it started from uh, started to like remotely hacking the car's physic, uh, physic physically, so you can remotely control the car. To that that uh, kind of like a, a qualitative uh, change because uh, it f it, has, it it started car hacking had uh, had started to threat the driver's uh, life. So <coughs> th these are the famous car car hacking incidents uh, examples that uh, have has uh, happened during the last few years for example the tesla hack which is done by my colleagues and the the bmw the the jeep hack last year uh, released by chris valasek and uh, charlie miller so uh, so that's why we we should pay more attention to to the automobile security so this is a talk that the, the China Miner just just gave uh, just uh, yesterday on oh, Black Hat just a few days ago. Uh, he talked about how to in, inject CAM packets to control the physical features of uh, modern automotive. My talk is uh, is, uh, is targeting this kind of attack. Why I'm I'm trying to detect the anomalies by building a mathematic model that. Uh, uh, <coughs> that can detect this kind of attack, like the the parameter spoofing and the, in the packet injection. So that's, that, that this is how uh, the the Jeep hack, how how they uh, get can, can gain remote control of the vehicle. Uh, you can see that affects a lot of cars because it's internet wide. <coughs> Okay, um, a modern car, especially the, the the ongoing development of the uh, 
autonomous, autonomous vehicles, they are facing uh, various threats. For example, the sensor security the, the, that my colleague is going to talk about tomorrow, that uh, the, the, the LiDAR, LiDAR uh, uh, ultrasonic sensor and the cameras that are all susceptible to the hackers. So this is uh, uh, last year's re last year's uh, research by those uh, researchers that they have done some had done some experience on the autonomous vehicle sensors. So and the GPS spoofing also done by my teammate uh, that uh, we ha we can uh, hi uh, hijack the car's location capability. So a uh, little bit about the automotive uh, pr working principle. How does a, how a typical uh, car work? Okay, uh, this uh, I will explain only uh, the, the aspects that's only related to my research. Uh, a typical car, there's a power train, has a transmission, an engine, and uh, and uh, and the steering system, braking. So. <coughs> It, this uh, the, the 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 engine uh, uh, output is power via the uh, transmission, and the transmission can controls the gear ratio, so the car can vary its speed. Can vary its speed. Okay. So so what exactly? Is uh, why w we only talk about the f uh, car hacking recently? Because uh, the car has changed a lot. Because it changed from the, mm, for example, the, this is a uh, uh, drive-by wire systems, uh, and the car has changed from like the phys uh, using the physical connection between the acceleration pedal to the to the throttle body it's, it was a uh, mechanic connections but nowadays it introduced they have introduced like drive by wire system which uh, they use several motors to control the servos to control the uh, throttle body and they use the computer to control that and the the uh, acceleration pedal now is just a sensor so, uh, under the ECU, the ECU, the ECM, the, the electronic strut uh, control module is connected via CAN bus. And on the CAN bus, uh, there is typically another module called an uh, infotainment system. The infotainment system, infotainment system is connected to the internet. So, that's, that's what's, what's, what's introduced the, the danger, the, the, the hackable. <laughs> So you can see the drive by wire systems. The, the acceleration pedal is a, a, a signal is gathered b uh, by the electronic throttle control module, and the throttle control module output the signal to control a uh, servo that controls the throttle. So, uh, and the engine control unit is connected to the throttle control module. So, uh, it's dangerous if the, if a hacker can can gain control of the canvas that is used to uh, network those uh, ECUs. And the steering, steering, by wi steering by wire system is also the same. They used to be a mechanical connection, so you are, cannot hack hack the the steering. But nowadays you can you can see that there is a clutch, and they are also uh, used controlled by ECUs. So it's very dangerous. So, automotive control system actually usually, usually uh, an, a typical automotive takes uh, input, uh, takes as its input the environment, uh, environmental variables, driving conditions, vehicle variables, user variables. User variable, for example, the, the driver's input, the gear, the, the acceleration pedal. So, that's the user input. And the environmental in variables is are uh, like the like the sensor input like uh, so the, under the location exec etc and it it would gather it, it uh, based on this can, uh, input the the vehicle uh, uh, controls the engine con and uh, transmissions to uh, change those so those input it's uh, like a closed loop control system. 
So uh, this uh, is a typical vehicle communication system that it consists of uh, multiple uh, protocols like Lean and uh, Drive. Uh, uh, drive can, there is multiple CAN bus, uh, diagnostic CAN, and uh, there is an infotainment system which you often use like the most uh, protocol. So uh, actually, the, uh, I'm, I will, in my work, I have to uh, like ac acquire the CAN traffic. So I, 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 uh, I I got got my can, can traffic from the engine can the drive can. So let me uh, take a, take the speed as an example to see how uh, how the system is susceptible to the to ha hacking. Uh, for, uh, the speed is produced by the electronic stabi uh, for example, the st electronic stability program, they, they will use speed as its input. But if, uh, uh, so, and the, the, uh, the engine management also needs speed to control the throttle. So, the, so many ECUs on the canvas are using the speed as its, its input. And the transmission need, need to use the speed to make decision on how to change the gears. And the adaptive cruise control, of course, it also needs the speed because you have to keep the, maintain the, the uh, speed. And then the inertia and navigation system, they have to use speed as uh, as well to calculate the uh, location. Okay, this is CAN bus signaling. So CAN bus have two usually have two wires. It's CAN high, CAN low, and it's a differential uh, differential signals. It's using differential differential signal. So this, uh, as this is not uh, uh, not closely related to my research, so I just skip the, those. To, but uh, you can see that the can signal is not look like this. It's a differential signal, so it's uh, it's not susceptible to the common mode uh, uh, uh <coughs> interference. So this is a can typical can frame structure. A can can. Can packets usually ha only have a can ID. It don't, it doesn't have a have a source or destination address. So you cannot use like the uh, you cannot block the the, the packets or filter the packets based on the the, the, the like the typical uh, computer firewall does. So you only you can only. Uh, uh, Make your decision based on the contents that it carries. So uh, this is a uh, uh, CAN bus access arbitration um, process. A CAN bus is uh, uh, all the nodes on the CAN bus can send can send packets with any ID value. So uh, how and there there there, 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 there are all connected. Uh, to the canvas like this. So, uh, if two nodes on the network uh, tries to send try to send this, uh, a packet at the same time, so which got to, uh, which which can can which load got to send to, to transmit the data to send the data, it's the de it's determined by the arbitration process here. Uh, so the a, a, a packet with a, a can ID, whose can ID value is is lesser than the uh, value of uh, to, um, to is lesser than the value of a, a another uh, can packet gets to send big. So it, you can see that the, the lower the can ID value, the higher the privilege of that packet uh, of that packet. So. The difficulties of campus defense, uh, as you can see from the network architecture here, uh, if you detect a malicious, uh, for example, you, you detect a load A is sending, is transmitting malicious packets, how can you, uh, how, 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 how could you uh, block that, how could you uh, um, defend that kind of attack? You, you cut the, off the communication of the load A, uh, you, you, for example, if the load A is controls the engine, if you 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 block the communication of of that e module, the car will malfunction. So it's hard to like 
simply block the commu uh, communication. And uh, uh, another problem is that the camp uh, the, the, the you know, it's very hard to trace back to the senders. So uh, as I just mentioned, the car, uh, the, the, the CAN bus only have a CAN ID. So if you detect the malicious packet, you, you cannot even decide which ECU transmitted that packet. So that's a, that, that's a problem too. And the third problem is that high cost of po false po positive, I just mentioned that if you just simply block uh, communication between certain ECU and the other ECU, so you, you will cause, more than likely to cause problem. And all the packets on the canvas, uh, they are very often they are there are uh, real-time parameters, for example, the current speed, the current RPM. So, th so those parameters uh, required uh, has time constraints. So you cannot like so uh, block the like like do the do a filter, for example, you you uh, you de uh, the decision you you click this you you receive a packet, you do some calculation on it to see it, if it is malicious, and then you. You send that packet on the net onto the network. That, that will would introduce delay, and it's not uh, it's not uh, uh, very good. So, CAN bus attack usually includes this two can two kind of attack packets injection. For example, you uh, attacker uh, attacker can can observe on the the uh, traffic on the CAN bus to say what packets contains what features of the car. So, and then he in, re, replace that packet or inject or modify the packets to do some injection. So, uh, this kind of attack is very o often and. Uh, Parameters proofing, for example, uh, in the GPAC, the channel miller uh, the, uh, the conducted that uh, in order to control the like the uh, steering steering at high speed, you ma uh, you have to like proof the speed uh, to make this car think that it's traveling at low speed because the car won't allow you to control the steering when uh, the car is traveling at above five five miles per hour. So it, you have to spoof the parameters. So, uh, so that's it. okay. Uh, so related research of car hack security, uh, the SAE has also in, uh, published the, the cybersecurity guidebook for for car security, and and the national highway and transmi transportation transportation department they also uh, published the, the, the white paper that stating that it's the, the need for intrusion detection solutions so that's what my research is about now let's get into the meat of this talk this talk is talking about like to detect the parameter injection and the spoofing attack so uh, I have, have uh, uh, mentioned that the CAN network architecture is like they are, have two wires. One is kind of high, and one, another one is high, high low. And these two wires is connected like this. So how can you de uh, defend defense, defend against the, uh, the attacks? The first, uh, but uh, not um, practical uh, uh, method, is to introduce a, a gateway between e every ECU and the canvas. But this requires uh, very uh, many changes to the very require change to the basic uh, can network architecture, and it's so it's hard to implement. So I I propose the, this architecture to defend to defend against car car hacking. So this uh, is the original can. Pass and uh, not modified. You just you just add an IDS intrusion detection system to uh, on the cameras to detect the attacks, and then you use the when you, when an attack is detected, you 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 control the wireless gateway that, uh, for example, the infotainment module that uh, has internet which has 
uh, internet connection. When you de detect an attack, you can you can like uh, control the wireless, uh, to control the, the the cellular net connection or other kind of connection like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You just control the, those connections to prevent the hacker from uh, further gaining gaining control of your system. So you you can block the and fire off an alarm. So how to detect the uh, uh, the the this kind of a, those attack those attacks I I have mentioned. So the 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 can manufacturers come up with like the entropy based anomaly detection, which the, in which they use the the all the, uh, the entropy on the network uh, to detect attack. For if t they, they assume that uh, if uh, can network ex is exper or experience some kind of attack, the entropy of that uh, uh, of those uh, traffic will will change, but uh, and. Uh, you can see the the result. The, uh, like they injected four uh, four packets and it did, they de detected three of those. Uh, so what's the so uh, why those method is not very good m m are not very good because uh, because they are not con considering temporal features. For example, the speed is uh, like a con continuous variable. So if uh, if those uh, like the entropy-based uh, anomaly detection, they cannot de detect. They, they are not considering the, this kind of features. Uh, for example, the speed uh, at time t is like 60 kilome k kilometers per hour, and uh, at t t plus one, the, the speed suddenly changed to like 100 kilometers per hour. So that's that kind of uh, anomaly, they might not be able to detect. And uh, uh, so, my method can take cons into consideration the the relationship between one param certain parameters to the other parameters. For example, the speed is related to the uh, engine uh, rotational speed, and uh, is related to the current gear. The the transmission uh, is. In. And uh, is uh, related to other like the accelera acceleration pedal, like the engine uh, intake, uh, the air speed, uh, the, the air mass flow. So all those parameters are related. My method is to exploit those to the relationship to detect uh, the attacks. For example, you, you if the attacker want to, uh, if the real speed current speed is like 10 kilometers per hour, and the attacker tried to uh, spoof the speed, to show he want to fall in the, the other, other issue into thinking that the speed is like 60 uh, miles, 60 kilometers per hour. Uh, it w the, the relationship between the uh, RPM and other parameters will change. So, for example, uh, I have ex explained that the relationship can be used to detect this kind of attack, but how to implement it? For example, like this equation, just a linear equation that RPM uh, multiplied by gear and uh, multiplied by another constant is the speed. Is it is it uh, is is it is it that that, that simple? Mm, uh, but uh, it's not that simple, right? <laughs> so <laughs> you have the, the, this. This is a, like a typical transmission, and it has many clutches. So you, when you have clutch, you introduce nonlinearity. So the the equation I've just shown is not. Uh, Practical. It's, you cannot use a simple mathematic model to describe the relationship between those these two parameters. So, so this is you, you can tell from this. This is a graph that I grabbed from directly from the internet. That you can see the speed and the the speed and the and the, the gear ratio. They are not even like that linear uh, the relation be between ship between them is not linear so. and uh, you can tell that the speed is also a, it's a continuous variable so th these features are you need to consider uh, we, we take consideration think into consideration those uh, those features to uh, de detect the attack so
So this uh, is uh, real data that I I received from the my experiment uh, the car the my my car. Um, my experiment car, and you can see there are the, I, I, these are the parameters relationship. You can see the purple one is the acceleration pedal, the the, the gas pedal. Uh, so uh, you can see that uh, when the gas pedal goes up, the, the general trend of other, other parameters also goes up. But you, you cannot use it as simple function or uh, to like describe this relationship. So how to do do this? And and now I know that all the parameters are related. I can use the other parameters of current value to to see if the another parameter is anomalous anomalous or not. But how to implement that? So uh, uh, let, let, let's assume that we already had had a, like a mathematic model to describe the relationship of those parameters. So how could we use that? Uh, Mathematical model to detect attack. You 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 receive the live data stream from the CAN bus. The CAN bus, uh, like for example, the speed, gear, RPM, and the acceleration pedal, and they use this par these parameters as input to the mathematical model you have just built, and uh, uh, and use for example, you know the current gear current RPM and acceleration pedal position. You use those parameters to, uh, to as input of, uh, of the system model, the mathematic model we just built, and uh, you make a calculation. Uh, you, you can say it's prediction of another parameter, for example, the speed. So, and the, the, the speed you received on the network, if it's deviate very much, too much from the speed you just calculated based on the other parameters, you you can see that's an anomaly, that's an attack. So the basic idea is like this: to increase the accuracy, to increase the, uh, mm, to to reduce the error, uh, false positive, you could use like for example the uh, cross cross validation. You use, for example, the attacker is currently proofing the speed. You use uh, other parameters to. Uh, Calculate the, the the speed, and you. This is one uh, one uh, one result you can get, and uh, and you use that speed, whether it is uh, be the real speed or the proved speed. You use that speed uh, and other parameters to ca to calculate the, the current gear. So. Uh, it goes on, and, and then you use uh, uh, you you calculate RPM based on the other the rest of the parameters, and then use that to do like a polling. So finally, you get a high accurate, high very accurate anomaly detection um, model. And um, now let's get in uh, to talk about. Let me uh, introduce how to uh, build this system model. Uh, the method I employed is like deep learning. Deep learning is just uh, although there are um, so many, so much, many all hype about the um, deep learning, but deep learning is basically uh, just a, a method to build a mathematic model. So that's uh, how uh, the machine learning or deep learning work. So we, we we now want uh, uh, to build a mathematic model, but uh, so we uh, the d deep learning is using like a neural network. The neural network you can, you can just see that it's uh, uh, it's it, it's just a like universal function ac approximator. You can see that it's just a template of the uh, mathematic model. So you have to use the live data stream from the car to. Train the model. The training process is like you, you give the, uh, um, this the, this model the some example, and you, uh, the you, the machine learning technique is used to automatically figure out the relationship of the of the the, the parameters. So, uh, I don't know if uh, anybody can have questions here. Is that function continuously updated? Uh, and I haven't uh, deployed this, but you could do that. For example, uh, when you deploy this system on a, on, on a real car, you you can. Uh, but you, you know the car wear out. 
all the parts, the relationship between those relationship between those par uh, parts will change. That, so the relationship between the parameters will change. For example, in a new a new car, you press the accelerating pedal pedal uh, slightly, the car will tra travel very very fast. For an older car, it's not the case, right? So it's so you could use uh, so continuous op continuously updating the model is the best way, right? So. So you could uh, deploy the system like this. The, after the training, this this network is just a bunch of weights and the network configuration. So these parameters you can, like for example, uh, you you could use the server so all the cars can uh, grab the trend trend already trained model and uh, deploy it on the car to de de detect the anomalies. And another case is that if the car uh, has has wear out the, the relationship have, has changed you may you, you re retrain those model using the specific specific par parameters the specific parameters of that specific car so does that make sense okay thank you okay, let me uh, go on so uh, you can see this is just like a ma template of the mathematic model all the uh, let me here. So this is a specific neural that in this network. Then you can see that uh, there is the input x x1 to xn. Those input uh, as a as a parameters I just mentioned. You use these parameters, and uh, uh, I'll I'll introduce the the input out of and the input vector and the output vector of my system uh, first. Uh, I'm wondering how how many of you had uh, a knowledge about uh, uh, deep learning or machine learning? Okay, oh, great. So uh, you you use the normal data of the car to train the model. So uh, after train uh, after train the model can where uh, uh, let me introduce the training process. Uh, this is a neural. You you give it, it uh, some training data set, some example to make the new neural network to figure out the relationship between the input and output. For example, I I don't I don't know the current uh, uh, the previously mentioned the the, uh, the function is. Just a simple mathematical model. For example, the C, the constant, is not initialized. You don't know what the constant is. So you you give the, some it, some example. For example, there is uh, you can imagine that there there is a curve on uh, on, on the x y plane. The curve uh, the, 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 part, the mathematical model can be used to describe that curve, but you don't know the math, math, mathematical model yet. So I, I gave you a bunch of po points on the uh, on the curve, and you based on those curve uh, those points those the, the, those those x y points, you can figure out what the what the curve, the mathematical that uh, model that describes that curve is? Yeah. Huh? Uh, I just try to make a, take that as an example to explain what the uh, machine learning training process is like. It's just like you give it. A, uh, there is a curve. You give a bunch of points on the curve, and you, based on the points, you figure out what's the mathematical model that describes that curve. So that's the training process. It's like, it, it's it's not exactly describing uh, description of that uh, curve because uh, you, you have uh, errors, but it's approx approximately, yeah, uh, approximation of that that mathematical the curve's mathematic model. So this is very important. Uh, has anybody understand this? Um, how do you train the wrong or the data? Um, no, you train the you train the model using the uh, the, the normal data. Okay, only the correct data. But then in the end, you, can, you could get a neural network that will accept all data, right? Yeah, will accept the anomalous anomalous traffic as well. And, uh, so. Uh, let me go on. So, if you have any question, you can ask me later. So, you can see that uh, 
th this is a training process. You can see you, you use the examples to uh, uh, train the model. It's, it's like f at first thing you use the first example. You uh, output the, the output is zero. You, you can see that there's a threshold. If it's larger than uh, zero point five, you give it a uh, one. If it's lesser than 0 0.5, you give it zero. So at first, the first example, you had this three input, you got zero output, but there's there is a 0 0.8, so you you actually get the output is one. So you have to modify the weights. The the the, the, the hammer is like the mod modifying the the weights of the network, and then you get like the using another example. Uh, Example: the, the training data, uh, you can get this. This result is, here is right. So I just skip a little bit of this. And if you have a question, uh, uh, this is the experience card that I used. It uh, has many cyber physics features. You can. It's a hybrid vehicle. You use both use battery and gasoline, and it's uh, use has electronic brake, uh, steering, and uh, electronic throttle. So you could, and they have rich internet-based uh, features. For example, you can use a cellular connection. You can use their cloud service. You can use a, a mobile phone to remotely open the car for your friends. And you can use a Bluetooth key, which you can use a, a phone as the car's key fob. And this network architecture is like this. So I mentioned uh, previously that I acquired acquired the data from the engine canvas. So the, 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 this is exactly the, the same thing. Why I'm, uh, I would like acquire the data from the engine canvas because the engine canvas has all the param parameters I just mentioned. Those related parameters I just mentioned. So I acquired the data from there. Because there is a gateway, so uh, not all the parameters are transmitted on all the canvas. Otherwise, there won't be a lead for the gateway. Uh, so uh, the canvas, uh, the can data, the can package, uh, what can, can, can pa package with what ID? Uh, is uh, carrying what kind of parameters is kept highly confidential by the manufacturers. You have to do some reverse engineer to understand what uh, what's in the payload of those packets. So this is uh, like the result of my reverse engineering uh, work. And you can see there, there are many uh, parameters. For example, if you turn a, a single light, there will be a packet on the canvas. And uh, these parameters, uh, after you reverse engineering, you get a CAN database. That's highly confidential. OK, this is an example. i just show you how, how, to, uh, how those uh, reverse engineered uh, signals look like. You can see that the CAN payload is actually eight, typically eight bytes. So what uh, the signals, like the right turn signal, is uh, only like uh, one byte, so that one one bit, one bit, that one bit indicates if if you are the, the, the right turn or left turn. So that's a single, and uh, so the whole process of building the mathematical model is like this: you acquire the data from the canvas, and then you do some de process pre process uh, on the data, and then you analyze the data, the reverse engineer. And then you select the features that are uh, related to each other. And uh, you're training the model, and then finally you're testing. So this is the procedure. So this is data acquisition from the engine can. I use the computer and the interface device to acquire the data. This is uh, re reverse engineered. Uh, that I, uh, so I, I, I uh, mask this uh, to avoid the, the, some, the problem that my, uh, the manufacturers might, you know. Enforce me. Uh, uh, the, this is a raw traffic uh, that the uh, CAM package capture tool. It's called the Bus Master. It's open source. You could try to try this at home. And uh, so the data uh, at, uh, are at different scales. For example, the RPM might range from zero, ranging, might range from zero to like one thousand. The RPM you have to do the. Uh, Conver conversion to 
get the real RPM and the speed also like that. So you have to, before you use the data to train, train, train the model, you have to normalize the data to convert it to make them ranging from zero to, to one. So that's normalization and the interpolation I already explained. This is, I use this simple, uh, um, e um, simple uh, like equation to convert, to, to normalize the, the, the input. And uh, the interpolation, because uh, I, I just mentioned that the compactors have different privileges. For example, the, 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 no, the, the package with lower KID value has the uh, highest privilege, so it gets to sent more often. Yes, it's uh, often that's par those parameters are important. They they, they are transmitting at high higher frequency, and those and, and other parameters may 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 have lower privilege. So that you can see that uh, uh, you can see that many packets may transmit like twice once per second, but but other parameters might appear only like w uh, once. Per second, so you have to in, in interpolate to de derive the the, the 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 value of that parameters uh, uh, you, as those uh, when, when the parameters are not transmitted on the network. So you have to interpolate. Except simply after you in, in interpolation, so certain param param parameters are not you uh, will change very 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 slowly. You can see this the parameters uh, th that. That uh, that at the most left si uh, column is uh, is the uh, uh, time in in microseconds. So you can see the the parameters uh, the pa these parameters the intake pressure uh, is not changing that very fast. So you you could uh, do some subsampling to you know, to make the uh, training set training data set smaller. Okay. Uh, after uh, subsampling is like this is change you can see the changes of the okay uh, this is very important very important how do you uh, uh, get the input vector and output of, of vector of those parameters um, you you can see that uh, you, because uh, most of the machine learning techniques you, they are supervised learning and now I only have the uh, normal data of the car. I don't have the attack traffic on the car. How do I train this model? So I I used this. I use the because I mentioned this, this, this parameters are all uh, continuously variables. So I used the uh, value of those uh, those variables, those parameters, uh, the the value of those parameters uh, from like time. Uh, use the previous values to predict. The values uh, of uh, and use the uh, how to explain this. I used like uh, parameter the value of those parameters from like time minus uh, ten to time t minus one. So I use those uh, the values of between the, that time to predict uh, the values at time t. Does that make sense? So okay, I use uh, so. Uh, you can see that I used like mm, seven parameters, seven parameters, the intake pressure, the RPM, the speed. Those parameters, I used the uh, values values of those parameters from time to minus like 10 to, uh, to, to time minus one. And to use those values to predict the value at time t. Uh, okay, this is how I uh, how the input vector and output vector of the uh, neural net network is formed. Uh, this uh, I don't know if everybody can can see this code. Uh, actually, this code is used uh, is I used the op open source um, deep learning uh, uh, software called. Keras. This software is very simple to use. You just uh, pre-process this data. It's in Python. You pre-process this data and uh, uh, you, you, you split the uh, input vector and output vector and use those data to train the model. After training, uh, let me show you the result. So uh, th th this is uh, the speed. 
uh, the one one of the curve is uh, curves is the prediction the, the the result calculated from the mathematical model. What is your output vector? Oh, okay, okay, output vector. I think I ha I talked about that here. Uh, you have this. Uh, you can you can see that the only data I have here is this kind of data. Those curves, those curves. The only data I have, and these curves are normal data. I don't have the, uh, don't have the attack traffic. For example, you 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 slip the traffic when the attack attack is happening. I don't have that data. I only have normal data. Yeah. So basically, you uh, input five speed and output is one speed. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and uh, not only five. I think it's not that simple. You, you because you you take input as multi uh, the the values of multiple parameters. So you're not based on the decision. Uh, you're not predicting the the speed. Only using the speed, the past speed. So you are also using the past values of those RPM intake pressure. Or, or can you understand that? Okay, great. So for example, you you you. you uh, okay, you use the uh, uh, the curve, this this section of the curve, to predict a single single point at this place. So, <laughs> okay, okay, this is the result. You can see that uh, uh, it looks uh, pretty pretty good. Okay. The, the speed you use, uh, you use uh, add all the parameters to, pr uh, to predict the speed. It's pretty pretty good. And I used a measure to to measure the the use the uh, the mean square error as a measurement to of the deviation between the predicted speed and the real speed I received on the network. Uh, because, because actually, I have plotted the, the mean square rule on this graph as well because it's not on the same scale, so it's, you cannot see it. So I re plotted it here, so you can see this. Uh, this is uh, point zero zero four. The, the, the scale, okay, it's much smaller. So let me try to uh, try this on uh, like attack. Uh, an attack. This attack is like the, the RPM is is uh, the, the the attacker is replaying the RPM. It's like spoofing the RPM with the original the, the right RPM also transmitting on the network. So you can see that uh, the RPM when you plot it is oscillating because the, the what they are sending at the same like the same frequency so you can see the curve is oscillating on the top right left corner and uh, this is the abnormal rpm you c if you uh, zoom in those uh, black and black sections those are oscillating curves and uh, you can see uh, <laughs> well the, the, the below is the attack and above is a uh, mean square error you can see when there is an attack happening, you can see the the prediction, the prediction is deviate very much from the actual value you uh, you acquired from the network. Okay, uh, I think this is uh, all, all I got. So have any? Does anyone have problem? Okay. <laughs> What? The threshold, the value of the threshold. Oh, the threshold, yeah. The, the lower the threshold, uh, the force, more force positive you may get. Yes. How do you do it? Okay, you have to, uh, like, uh, next stage you use the real attack. Uh, may, um, may, and the, the, may, you may create some attack traffic and test that. And then based on those test results, you get the threshold. Or maybe you can make this threshold adjustable. That's based on, uh, yeah, that's based on, on your. Uh, anyone has a problem? Question? Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, my English is very not accurate. <laughs>
there to stop uh, a cutter just to all five parameters? Oh, that would be a big, big problem for him. Yeah, if you uh, try to speak, uh, I, I used actually, I, this is like a prototype, it's a preliminary research, I used like seven parameters. But if you are, an attacker tries to send all these kind of parameters, I think it's very hard because you only can control of one ECU on the network. You should, uh, one ECU on the, on the network usually, so you, you uh, they can, Canvas, the speed of the canvas is uh, not only the speed is limited, but also you, if you spoof all this, you have to first make this kind of model in order to spoof all the parameters, right? Because, for example, you, if you don't want to speed all, uh, spoof all the parameters, you have to build a model that describes this relationship between those parameters in order to decide what value to send, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So, exactly. So either way, you can stay on some kind of data and you don't know it's correct. Yeah. Even, even, even if you do an attack like this, that you screw all the parameters, I think this, this model can still de detect the attack because uh, when you spoof the traffic, you have, if you're not, you don't have this kind of model. This model, the, the, this, the model, uh, because I use the data from a specific car to train the model, even if you spoof all the parameters, I think I would still be able to detect that attack. Do you remember the pony? You cannot, well, for, for example, an attacker usually don't have the capability to like uh, uh, spoof the, 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 those values so perfectly, I think. What if they play back the data? Play back the data. Playback the data is, is still can be uh, it still can be detected. You see the oscillation. The, the, the oscillation. Uh, you, you mean uh, spoof? Uh, you mean replay the de traffic while blocking all the normal traffic? The, the I think the car would have already stopped, <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. Uh, I can't uh, differentiate between this can, th these two uh, scenarios because uh, if there's a mechanic failure, I, I think uh, it, it is. I think the information that, the, like for example, you you detect uh, you 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 could det the system would output output the, the, this kind of scenario as an attack, but I think it's still informative to know that. Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. Um, could you train the model or adapt the model, tell the model to reject the parameters that could train with the environment? So, for example, if you were comparing wheel speeds and trying to look for an incorrect wheel speed, and get based on the maybe comparing three wheel speeds with steering angle to predict the four <coughs> wheel speed, that could fail at, say, you drive the novice and the wheel started slipping. Okay? It, could, it could say there's a problem. Is there a way to train the model or tell the model to reject certain aspects of the Oh, you mean just like uh, differentiate? You, 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 I think your question is uh, is very familiar with the, the yeah. he, he asked. And I think uh, with more work, you can do that. Once you detect an, uh, detect an attack, you add another stage between the, the final de uh, decision and uh, this detected attack, you could use like a database that uh, describe in the situation you just mentioned and you know, do, uh, add a filter to that maybe. But I, yeah, I, it's just, um, uh, sir? Uh, the Oh, you mean the, 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 those parameters are not related to uh, in the, the, those packets not not related to other parameters? For example, a, a random human input, right? 
For example, the break, uh, you don't know, you cannot say, uh, predict how when the user is going to press on the break. That kind of attack, uh, th this model cannot be used to detect, detect that kind of attack. For example, if, if the attacker want to like, send a packet that only gets sent when a user press certain button, button, you cannot use this to de detect that kind of attack. But I think the, this mo the I think the, the, this model covers uh, the most important attacking scenario already. For example, the speed, RPM, uh, acceleration. This this attack can all be detected. So, uh, like the you open the, for example, you turn on, you you send a packet to turn on the uh, turn turn turning signal. This kind of attack is like based on the user's random input. I I, I assume it's random because I don't don't have sensors to take the current uh, environment where whether it is uh, across in front. I cannot detect. So I I assume it's random. So I cannot de cannot detect the, this kind of of attack. So what other, what other vehicle systems, so the way I see this here is that you're more so detecting that there's a possible attack whether than there is or is not an attack. So what other systems would you use in the vehicle to kind of collaborate the data to determine whether or not it actually is an attack? Oh, I haven't uh, considered that, but I think uh, it's necessary to consider that um, because you, uh, this system is uh, uh, certainly uh, going, going to get many like false positives, and uh, I, I, I suddenly uh, happened to me the, the, the question that the, that, that gentleman has asked. Uh, I think I got uh, another uh, had to further answer. You, you said that um, uh, certain parameters, for for example, the, the in the Charlie Miller's work, and uh, uh, recently the cement semantics company has released uh, some, their their product. Those products are based on like the uh, they ha they also use machine learning, and, uh, but they use machine learning to learn the frequency of certain parameters. Uh, or the frequency of certain packets. So uh, I think uh, their system might be, uh, I don't think their system will solve the problem you just mentioned, but I think uh, it's, uh, well, uh, uh, would add, uh, add capabilities to the, this system. And uh, I, I heard that uh, uh, some, some academic researchers also ha had the idea of like measure the uh, subtle deviation, subtle, subtle error uh, of the certain packet because the, the GCUs, they all have the, the, the microchip. This chip, their, 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 their timers, those, uh, the, the accuracy of those timers are uh, very high. So the, this, the certain packets, you can see that it's, uh, the, the periodic messages, the packets are, are if an attacker attack it, the time, time, timing would, would exhibit anomalous behaviors. Okay, have any, anybody <laughs> still have questions? Okay, sir. I I I wish I wish I could uh, add more parameters to the system, but uh, a typical car only have the, uh, the, the, the that many parameters uh, like related to each other. So if you are able to like mount all more sensors on the car to monitor more m parameters, and those parameters are also uh, like uh, related to each other, I think it will dramatically reduce the false positive rate. Uh, I, I beg your pardon. Okay, okay. I will talk. I don't know how much time I have to spend uh, on this. Okay, and the next talk is also from the research done by my by Unicorn team, my team. And uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I think uh, uh, there's the acknowledgments. Okay, I am not very not uh, machine machine learning savvy, so I asked and I had help from those those 
folks from my company, there's Professor Shui Chen Yan from the Chihu 360 Institute of Artificial Intelligence. They are very good at the deep learning. And uh, I have uh, uh, Dr. Min Ning from the Institute of Artificial Intelligence, uh, which is a student of, of Professor Yan Shui Chen Yan. And I also had, had uh, help from my colleague, Dr. Uh, Lin Huang from uh, my team. So uh, hereby I, I uh, appreciate their help. Uh, These are the references. So if anybody is interested in uh, cash security research, you can yeah, reference, you create those papers, to take a photo. Uh, it's, uh, I think the, the Carol, uh, Carol Koster's uh, research and the China Minas research are, are very good. And uh, okay, other research. Okay. <laughs> so the the the. Okay. Okay. Fine. The the last page. Okay. Ma many paper to read. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.